hi good day everyone welcome back to my youtube channel this is magia h and today we'll be taking a look at time value of money retirement annuities activities where we're going to be covering lump sum annuities and perpetuities so please make sure that you download uh, the practice file or the question that is going to be used in this activity on the link uh, posted below so let's go in and start with our activity So let's start with our tutorial questions. So our tutorial question is based on a retirement annuity of an individual where we're going to be applying our time value of money concept that we just basically learned through our classes. So I believe you've already covered this with your lecturers and now you're just coming here for learning purposes and for making sure that you understand the concept better and how it gets to be applied on retirement annuities. So without wasting time, I'm just gonna start by reading the scenario. And then from reading scenario, we're gonna go and analyze the scenario, break it down. And then from there, we're gonna answer the questions that are listed below as required. And then since uh, this is a pre-recorded lesson, uh, I've already wrote some stuff so that I do not get to waste much time typing them. So I'm going to be explaining them as time goes on. So this is a question of time value of money that involved retirement annuity of uh, lump sum uh, as well as uh, ordinary annuities and perpetuities. So we're going to be covering all of those under this lesson. So it reads as follows. So it says that here uh, we've got uh, Lali Mamidzana who has recently qualified to be a chartered management accountant and she is working at one of her big four accounting firms and due to the limited salary of an article like Lali did not contribute to any provident fund. Fortunately for her, the firm contributed a pension fund on her behalf. She was not content with only the pension fund but was adamant that she wanted to a uh, provident fund to supplement her extravagant lifestyle. <clears throat> so Lali decided that on the 1 of January 2019, she would begin contributing to a selected provident fund. Her contribution towards this provident fund would be monthly in areas. She wanted to get a lump sum payout on retirement date at the age of 65. Lali planned to put the lump sum money in a money market account at the bank and withdraw a monthly amount for the rest of her life. The, mon the monthly amount must be an amount that would be able to maintain two and a half times her post article salary. Additional information. One, Lali will be, uh, will be turning 26 on 1 January 2019 and Lali was assigned off from her article by Sima on 1 January 2018. The accounting firm gave her a salary increase to 22,000 per month. Currently, which is number three, currently the Provident Fund industry has provided a return of 8% compounded monthly to try and be ahead of inflation. Number four, Lali wants to contribute a maximum of 2,000 per month until she is 55 old and then provide and the provident fund will invest the capital due to her at that stage at an interest bearing account until she retires. The provident fund guarantees that the interest bearing account will yield a 9% return compounded monthly. The required return from retirement date onwards is expected to remain at 9% per annum. So required is the contribution Lali wants to make sufficient enough to give her a monthly amount she requires after retirement? That's the first question with 12 marks. B, how much must Lali contribute to be able to have sufficient monthly payment after retirement? 10 marks. C, what will the effect of monthly cash flow after the retirement be if the bank compounded the investment semi-annually for 10 years period in the interest bearing account? 6 marks. During the initial period when Lali will be contributing 2000 per month, what is the effective rate that will the Provident Fund delivers? 2 marks. And if interest bearing account yielded an effective interest rate of 9%, what will the nominal 
rate compounded quarterly B. So this is uh, the question that we have to deal with today, which is a retirement uh, annuity time value of money scenario. So based on this scenario, based on what I've read so far is that the first paragraph is just giving a background information on Lali and the most information that we'll have to consider is starting from the second paragraph plus the additional information which I'm going to be putting more focus on so that we're able to solve this uh, question. So here it says that Lali has decided on the 1 of January that she wants to contribute to a selected provident fund. So that's the first point that we're going to pick up there. And the second point is that this contribution will be monthly in areas. So meaning that these are going to form part of what we call or they fall or can be classified as an ordinary annuity because my payments are being made at the end of the month, which is in areas. So if it was in advance, that's going to be qualifying as an annuity due. But because payments are being made monthly in areas, that's an ordinary annuity. And therefore, it continued to say that she wants to get a lump sum payout on retirement date at the age of 65. So, meaning that Lali wants to invest into this provident fund until she is 65 years old. And then once she receives the money, we don't know what yet she's going to do. So, it continued to say that she plans to put the lump sum in a money market account at a bank and withdraw monthly amount for the rest of her life. So, meaning that... When she received her capital at the end or her investment at the end of 60, age of 65, she's going to go and reinvest the money through the money market account. Where under this money market account, she'll be withdrawing monthly amount for the rest of her life until she dies. So since we don't know when she's going to die, that will qualify this type of an investment as what we call a perpetuity. Since she, we don't know when she's going to die. And then it continued to say that monthly amount must be the amount that will be able to maintain two and a half time her first post article salary. So meaning that whatever she's currently getting after a post salary, she needs to withdraw two and a half times of that amount on a retirement account, which is coming from the money market account. And then it continues to say on additional information, she will be turning 26 on 1 January. 2019. So meaning that on 1 January 2019, Lali is actually 26. At the end of that month, she's going to be starting a contribution. And we also see on information number two that Lali was signed off from her article by SEMA on 1 January 2018. And then the accounting firm gave her a salary increase to 22. So this is a post article salary increase, which Lali requires to be two times by the time she, she needs to be able to withdraw two times this amount when she retires so meaning that her full investment will be based on her being able to receive two and a half time her post article salary of 22,000 per month and it says that currently the provident fund is providing a return of eight percent compounded monthly to try to be ahead of inflation meaning that on her contribution of her provident fund she will be earning eight percent and then it continued to say that she'll be contributing 2000 per month until she is 55, meaning that from the age of 26, when she's uh, on 1 January 2019, she will actually be contributing 2000 until she is actually 55, which is going to be earning 8% on that Provident Fund account. And then when she's 55, she's going to stop contributing. And then when she stops contributing, the money that is due to her at the age of 55, the provident fund will invest it into what we call an interest bearing account until she retires at the age of 65. And we're also told that she is guaranteed that she will earn 8% on this interest bearing account, which is going to be compounded monthly. So this is what she's going to earn between the age of 55 to 65. So meaning that she's going to contribute 2000 until she's 55. And from 55, whatever will be due to her will be reinvested by the Provident Fund up until 65. So from 65, that's when she's going to be earning, from 55 to 65, she's going to be earning 9%. But from 26 to 55, she's going to be earning 8% during this contribution. And then it continued to say that on the last one, the required return from retirement date onwards is expected to remain at 9% per annum, meaning that on her money market account, once she retires and receives a whole lump sum, 
this is gonna put it towards a money market account and withdraw an amount that is two times a post article salary and will be earning nine percent interest on that investment so let's take a look on the first question now that we have summarized the scenario so the first question says required is the contribution that Lali wants to make sufficient uh, it says that is the contribution that Lali wants to make sufficient to give her the monthly amount she requires after retirement. So when you're working with time value of money, the first thing that we're going to start with, we're going to look at the time and then we're going to look at the value and money after the time. So let's label down first the time frame and see what from the time frame that we're going to be working on. And from there, we can then try to solve the scenario based on the question. So the first thing we're going to take a look at the time frame. So the time frame is that Lali, she's currently 26 on 1 January 2019. And she's going to be turning, uh, uh, she's already turning 26, but she wants to invest up until 55. So meaning that from 26 to 55, it is going to be a separate investment uh, activity or a separate investment transactions. Transactions that are going to occur during the age 26 to 55 constitute one type of a scenario and then from 55 to 65 she's going to be this is no longer going to be contributing but the provident fund will reinvest the money on a behalf on an interest bearing account until she is 65 so meaning that we're going to be having another investment type from 55 to 65 and then from 65 they're going to give you her money and then once she gets the money, she's going to actually contribute or put it in a money market account and start earning interest and withdrawing her monthly, what you call uh, her monthly uh, withdrawal, which is going to fit her lifestyle. So which is going to be two times her post article salary. So under this one, we've got 26 years to 55. So this is the contribution where she's going to be making 2000 and from 55 to 65, this is the lump sum where the provident fund will actually reinvest, which is the capital due to her, to an interest bearing account. And then from 65 onwards, that's where she invests her own money into a money market account and get to withdraw money that is two times her post article salary. So the question is to say that is the contribution that Lali wants to make sufficient uh, enough to give her a monthly amount she requires after retirement so that is the question so our first part is to identify how much is that money that she needs to withdraw at the end of uh, her retirement on a monthly basis so we do know that her post article salary is now 22,000 so we do know that she have got uh, 122,000 so I'm just gonna quickly do this So we do know that it's 22,000. So if it's 22,000, therefore, what is the reward does Lali require? So Lali requires that the amount becomes two and a half time. So she wants to earn two and a half time after her retirement. So therefore, that will be 22,000 multiplied by two and a half time. That is going to give us the following amount, 55,000. So meaning that Lali will actually require to withdraw 55,000 on her retirement. And then now that we know that this is how much she needs to withdraw to so that she's able to maintain her extravagant lifestyle. So therefore we move to the question to say that if she's going to be contributing 2,000, will the 2,000 give her enough or will it build enough investment so that by the time she retires, she can be able to withdraw 55,000. So now the question is, how much does she actually get to need when she retires so that she can be able to withdraw 55,000? So on the investment account or money money account that she's gonna deposit the money, how much does she have to have in that money market account to be able to withdraw 55,000? So since we know that she's gonna be withdrawing this for the rest of her life and it's a perpetuity, so it means that we're going to use a perpetuity formula to calculate the present value of that investment. So therefore, this side, we're going to go and say, let's calculate the value of the present value of her perpetuity. So we're going to try to calculate the value of her perpetuity. 
So the value of a perpetuity based on the formula, it says that present value is equals to PMT divided by I. So if present value of a PMT is equals to PMT divided by I, so what is the interest that it is going to earn? What is the monthly amount that is going to be withdrawing? It's 55,000. And therefore, the interest that she will be earning on this account is 9%. And due to her making withdrawal on a monthly basis, therefore, interest will be compounded on a monthly basis. So she's quoted at 9% per annum, which is the last statement saying that the requirement rate for, uh, from retirement date is expected to remain at 9%. So our I will actually be 9%. But because it's on a monthly basis, so therefore this is equals to 9 divided by 12. So giving us 0, 0,075. So if this was in percentage, so therefore I'll have to type this into percentage so that we can get it in terms of percentage. So in percentage, that will be 0, 0,075, which is how much you'll actually be earning on each and every month. So therefore to complete the present value of a perpetuity, and we also know that, okay, she have got a PMT, which is the amount she'll be withdrawing of 55,000. So this is the value of money that she'll be withdrawing. So therefore, the present value for this perpetuity will be equals to 55,000 multiplied by her monthly, uh, by uh, it's your PMT divided by your interest rate, which is going to give us uh, how much? Uh, sorry about that. It's 55,000 divided by your perpetuity by your interest rate. So this is going to give us the following amount. So this following amount is equivalent to So I'm just going to put that there because I'm going to need that. So this is the amount that she needs. So we're going to be having 7,333,333,33 cents. So this means that Lali actually requires 7,333,333 rand, 33 cents at the age of retirement. If she needs to withdraw 55 million, uh, to withdraw uh, 55,000, sorry, it means that she needs to be having 7 million, 333 rand, comma 33 uh, rand, comma 33 cents. So this is the amount that she actually gets to need. So let's calculate and see based on the question. It says that is the contribution that Lali wants to make sufficient to give her monthly amount she requires after retirement. So Lali wants to contribute from 26 to 55. So from 26 to 55, so that will be equals to 26 minus 55 so that is equal to 29 years so meaning that she's going to be contributing for 29 years towards her retire provident fund so therefore we're gonna come and say a contribution from 26 to 55 years a contribution from 26 to 55 years will be as follows so therefore we're gonna label down all our time value of money and try to find out the value that will be missing on our element so based on the information provided it says that she will be earning or currently the provident fund industry provide 8% compounded monthly to try to be ahead of inflation so that means that we will be having um, uh, the frequency of compounding set to 12, meaning that our financial calculator will be set at a frequency of compounding of 12 periods, meaning that interest are going to be earned 12 times over the year, or she's going to receive interest 12 times over the year. And then we move towards our N, which is the number period. So the number period represent the number of, the, of times that she's going to be receiving the payments over this investment. So from 26 to 55 years, so it's 29. So instead of me making this, uh, let me make this positive. So because I can want to reference that. So meaning that now we're going to have N being the number of periods she's going to be receiving. Uh, she's going to be earning interest over her contribution and making payments. So that will be number of years, which is 29, multiplied by the frequency of uh, compounding, which is 12. Therefore, her N will actually be 348. And her interest over the years interest over the years so interest over the year that she will be earning will be eight percent so we don't actually have to divide this eight because automatically what 
our financial calculator will do this for us it will perform this on our behalf therefore we move forward and then say let's calculate the present value uh, let's look for the present value what will be the present value or the amount that she will be contributing at the start as a once off payment if it is there therefore we put the value so if there is not value therefore we put zero and then we move towards the pnt how much is it going to be contributing 2000 per month so if she's contributing that's an outflow of cash from her account so therefore we're gonna have 2000 minus 2000 flowing out from a bank account so therefore we're gonna have that as it is negative 2000 and therefore the missing element that we're looking for is the future value to say how much money she will have accumulated by the time she is 55 from the age of 26 to 55 so therefore we can go and use our financial calculator and say let's look at our financial calculator and see what value she will actually get to have so we're gonna clear our financial calculator from any calculation that was performed and let's set our financial calculator based on this scenario it says that frequency of compounding is 12 which is monthly and therefore we clear then our calculator for any previous calculation it's gonna confirm that 12 payments per year have been set and then we can capture our information to say that our n we know that n is 29 uh, n is 29 years multiplied by the frequency of compounding so since i've set that on my calculator i can enter it in two method i can just go and say 29 years second function and press n which is gonna be the pmt uh, sorry our number of periods so this n is the function of your financial calculator if you can see here you have got p over y meaning that your n is multiplied now by your number of years are going to be multiplied by the frequency of compounding so therefore i've entered 29 as my number of years so if i might press this it's gonna say my n have been captured as 348 uh, meaning that there are number 348 frequency of payment within this investment and therefore if i don't want to capture that like that so i'm just gonna clear this since i've already uh, labeled that down i can just still go and say 348 is my n so meaning that it will be captured as n and then from there i will move towards my i my i is 8 so i'm just gonna say 8 it's my i present value there is no amount that she's contributing as a once-off payment so therefore we're gonna have zero present value and then pmt she's contributing 2000 so it's gonna be an outflow of cash from her pocket so therefore that's gonna be our pmt and then we can go and say what is our future value so the future value or the amount that she's gonna have by the age of 55 will be 2 million seven hundred and twenty nine uh, thousand two hundred and eighty nine comma thirty seven cent so we can type this down to say two million seven hundred and twenty nine two hundred and eighty nine comma thirty seven cent so this is the amount that she will be received from her provident fund by the age of 55 so but the provident fund continue to say that from the age of 55 they are going to invest the capital due to her at that stage at an interest bearing account until she retires and this uh, provident fund guarantees her that the interest bearing account will yield nine percent compounded monthly so from this amount that she's supposed to receive at the age of 55 the provident fund from the age of 55 will invest this up until she's 65 years on interest bearing account so I'll just say interest bearing account. So this is a lump sum investment by a provident fund since she stops contributing at the age of 55. So therefore, if she stopped contributing at the age of 55 and she received 2 million, instead of her receiving 2 million 729, the provident fund is reinvesting this. So meaning that this will be the present value of this new investment account, which will be the interest bearing account. So therefore, since this was the amount that she was supposed to receive so it's a reinvestment so therefore it's going to be an outflow from her again from the age 55 to 65 and then uh, they also say that the interest will be compounded monthly so therefore we're going to still have 12 as our what frequency of payment but this time we're going to get to see 
from the age of 55 to 65 how many years so it's gonna be 65 minus 55 so that's equivalent to 10 years so meaning that you will actually be this amount will be invested for 10 years for the from the age of 55 to 65 so meaning that here our n is going to be equals to 10 years multiplied by the frequency of compounding which is 12 giving us 120 and then our i for this investment is 9 so therefore 9 will be divided by 12 on our financial calculator on the background there's no need for us to divide it and therefore we'll move towards the pmt pmt is she going to be making contribution towards a provident fund from the age 55 to 65 nope she's not going to be making any of those contribution or withdrawal so therefore pmt becomes zero and then we move towards a future value so the future value will be the amount that she's going to receive at the age of 65 so therefore we can calculate that as the missing element of our time value of money so one of the things that i'm just going to show you my decimals are so many within my calculator so to change that you can press second function display and i'm going to press four then my calculator will go back to four decimals so if you want to change that you can still go and say second uh, second function display and you press two then it's going to only show you two decimals so on mine i want to show four decimals to get accurate or close amount to the exact amount so that my amount is not far away from the original amount that i'm supposed to get so under this activity we clear our calculator so after each and every calculation that you perform on time value of money mm. scenario you have to clear your calculator so that it doesn't get to use the input that you previously used to calculate the new uh, based on the new scenario so therefore we clear the first activities so from there what we're gonna do we're gonna capture the information again 12 is our payment period over the years so we're gonna clear again it's gonna confirm that 12 payments have been set over the year and then our n we know that it's 10 second function which 10 represent the number of years multiply by the frequency of compounding giving us 120 and therefore we move towards our i interest over the years interest over the year we've been told it's nine so therefore we're gonna have nine and therefore present value becomes the future value when she's turning the 55 which is coming from a contribution account of the provident fund therefore that becomes also the present value of the new interest bearing account which is going to be two million seven hundred and twenty nine 289,37 cent which is going to be an outflow from her normal contribution account to the interest bearing account so therefore we're going to enter it as a negative and say this is the present value since under this period of 55 to 65 there's no contribution or withdrawal so therefore we're going to have a zero pmt and then we can look for our future value so our future value will be 6,690,462,82 cent. So this is the amount she's going to receive from her provident funds once she turns 65. So we're going to go and put that in our future value and say she's going to receive 6,690,462,82 cent. So this is the amount that she's going to be receiving from her provident fund at the age of 65 so automatically if we take a look close at our perpetuity we can already tell that she has not this amount is not going to be sufficient enough so let's still go further and continue to see and prove that this amount is sufficient or not sufficient enough so that we can see by the indication of the present value of the amount she should have on a perpetuity but let's take further look in terms of this activity and see if indeed it won't be sufficient enough so if this is the amount that they are going to deposit that they are going to give her and she's going to put in a money money uh, in a money market account and be able to withdraw the amount that is two and a half times her salary so let's see if that amount will be equal to that so we know that in terms of perpetuity we're going to have our present value so our present value that is going to invest in a money market, money market account is going to be what she's going to receive from a provident fund of the age of 65. So which is going to be an investment of 6,690,462,82. And then we need to calculate the PMT over this. 
but before we calculate PMT, we will need the interest that she's going to get on this investment. So the interest, we already identify that she's going to be earning 0 0.075 on a monthly basis, which is 9% after retirement. Therefore, to calculate PMT, we're going to come and say for her PMT on her, based on her contribution, it's going to be equals to her contribution of uh, an investment of 6,690,462,82 cent on a, what we call money market account multiplied by her monthly uh, by her interest rate will actually give us the interest that she's uh, the monthly withdrawal that she's going to be making which is 50,000 which is going to be 50,175 so this is uh, from 65 years onwards and onwards so from 65 years and onwards so this is how much Lali will actually be taking home based on a contribution of uh, 2000 per month now the question says is the contribution Lali wants to make sufficient to give her a monthly amount she requires after retirement she requires 55,000 but this time, based on a contribution, she can only get 50,175. So the answer to this question is no. So we're going to write no. Uh, Lali's contribution won't be sufficient enough to give a monthly amount she requires after retirement. So that will be the final statement under question number one which is requirement number a which is having 12 marks so you're gonna earn all your marks and then the last marks that you're gonna earn will be based on the comment you put to say that is the is the contribution sufficient enough if yes you're gonna say yes but under based on our scenario our contribution is not enough so therefore we're gonna say no she needs to contribute more sorry about that so it means that based on this contribution of 2000 she's not going to be contributing enough, which is 2,000, because she's only going to manage to get 50,178, and she requires 55. So let's move towards our next question. So we are done with the first requirement. Second requirement says, how much must Lali contribute to be able to have sufficient payments after retirement? So that is the second question. How much must she contribute so I'm just going to delete some of the information here and still use uh, the same spot to do the next calculation. So for solution of this activity, it's attached there underneath the, the recording. So if you look down there, you'll see the link that will allow you to download the question and the solution for practice papers. So let's stop here with the information. I believe I have enough space. So the second question, how much must Lali contribute to be able to have sufficient monthly payments? So under the first question, we already have most of the information based on answering number one, which is to identify that Lali actually wants to receive 55,000 after retirement or withdraw 55,000 from retirement up until she die. And we also identify that from this, Lali will actually need uh, 7 million 333,333 rand, 33 cents for her to be able to withdraw 55,000. So when you answer number two, which is B, make sure that you start with this point that for her to be able to maintain a lifestyle, she needs 55,000, which is coming from a post two, which is two times her post article salary. And the present value for this perpetuity will be 7,333,333.33 cent. So this is the start of your second uh, question as well, to say that you need to repeat this information as well. Then from there, you can go and say, if this is the amount that she needs when she's 65, therefore how much should have been invested into the interest bearing account for it to yield 707,333,000. So therefore, here we'll be taking a look in terms of the amount to say that from the age of 55 to 65, to 65 years, how much money was supposed to be invested in an interest-bearing account for her to have a future value of 
So I had to have a feature value of 7 million. 333,333 rand, 33 cent. Therefore, we need that present value at the age of 55, which will be equivalent after the future date, which is convention 1065 to be 7,333. So therefore, let's take a look in terms of the investment in terms from the age of 55 to 65. So based on our previous calculation, we know that the duration of this investment was 10 years. So therefore, here it's going to be 10 multiplied by the frequency of compounding, which we already identified previously that it was set at 12. And therefore, here it was equal to 12 multiplied by 10, which is the number of years and the frequency of compounding. Our interest is still 9. Therefore, we are looking for the present value. So we're going to skip this element and search for another one, which is the PMT. So under the PMT, we are aware that under PMT, she's not going to be making any contribution between the age of 55 to 65. So therefore, PMT becomes zero. And therefore, we can actually try to solve uh, for the present value since we have got all other elements except for present value. So when we go to our calculator, we're going to clear it, set it back again to 12. But sometimes it's not necessary to set it back to 12 if already your calculator have got a frequency of 12 being set on it. So therefore, you can just only clear it. But I always prefer to restart, reset everything and restart from scratch. So under this activity, our N, we know that the duration is 10 years. The duration will be 10 years. So we know that the duration is 10 years, so 10 multiplied by 12 giving us our n being 120, and then we're going to have our i being 9, so we're going to go and say 9 is our i, and then we're going to move forward and then capture our present value. This time we're looking for present value, so we skip it. Then we move to PMT. PMT, we know that during the duration of 10 years investment, which is from uh, the interest bearing account, no contribution will be made, so zero will be PMT. And then the future value will be equivalent to the amount that should be invested in a perpetuity account, which is 7,333,333 cent. So this will be the amount that she should have invested. So this will be the amount we should be, uh, I want to make sure that I've captured this right. 7,333,333 rand, 33,333 rand, 33 cents. So I forgot to put the comma there. Comma 33 cents. So this will be our future value. So the future value is an inflow of money from here from the age of 50, 55 to 65. So at the age of 65, this is the amount she's going to receive from a provident fund account. So we're going to put it as a positive. Then what is the amount that was invested by the provident fund into this interest bearing account for her to yield 7,333,000 or that she needs? So therefore, the amount that she needs to be invested in this bearing account is 2,991,540,24 cents. So it's going to be 2,991,000. 540 rands, 24 cents. So she needs to have this amount in her from her contribution. So meaning that for her interest bearing account, the provident fund needs to come to put 2,991,540,24 cents. This will allow her to be able to achieve 7,333,000 rand for her perpetuity uh, when she retires so that she's able to get 55,000. Then the second question from the base are still under the same uh, scenario to say that how much must she contribute becomes another question to say that if this is the amount that she will have by the age of 55, therefore how much was she contributing for her or how much should she have contributed for her to actually get to achieve 2,991,540 by the age of 55. So meaning that by the age of 55, which is 26 to 55 years here, 
Therefore, we do know that she will need the following amount. She will need 2,991,540, meaning that by the time she's 55 years, she should have contributed, her contribution should equal this amount, which this amount will be invested from the age 55 to 65 and equal to this amount. And this amount will therefore be invested in a perpetuity account and earn her 55,000 on a monthly basis. So therefore, let's calculate how much you should have contributed. So we are looking for PMT. So therefore, based on the information that we're already aware of, we know that the frequency of compounding is 12. Our N is equal this time from 26 to 55 years is 29 years. Multiply by the frequency of compounding of 12, it's 348. Our I this time is 8, the provident fund on the contribution investment. She's going to be earning 8%. Present value, there is no amount or once-off amount that she invested. So present value represent a once-off amount that is being put towards an investment or that is being received as part of a loan or a mortgage or a bond. So therefore, if there is no that kind of an amount that is being a once-off payment being made at the beginning, therefore present value always becomes zero. So if it is a series of payment being made at the beginning, that still qualifies it as a PMT, not as a present value. So therefore, you have to differentiate the two. So present value will still be zero, and then we can actually get to look for our PMT. So under here, we're going to go and say, let's look for PMT. So we're going to clear. So when you clear time value of money, I believe you're already familiar. Second, fun uh, first function. Uh, clear memory and you press 1 which is here saying TVM if you're working with cash flow you're gonna press 0 CFLO which is for cash flow and if you're working with bonds you're gonna press 7 which is for bonds because you're gonna be using the real amount written in blue but if you use bonds as time value of money you have to clear the time value of money instead of the bonds so this time we're working with time value of money so we set the frequency of compounding clear everything out then we've got 12 payments being set and then we go and then capture our information. We know that the period of this investment between 55, 26 to 55 is 29 years. Therefore, second function N giving us 348. And then our NI over interest over the year, it's 8%. And present value we skip, uh, sorry, we don't skip, it's zero. Therefore, we move towards PMT. This is what we are looking for. And then we therefore capture the feature value so that we can lastly look for our PMT. So our feature value is 2,991,504,24 cents. So this is the future value that she's going to receive. So the present value that she should be contributing towards this uh, provident fund is 2,192, 2,192,000. 18 cent so meaning that for her to be able to achieve the withdrawal of 55,000 on a monthly basis after retirement she needs 2 million she needs 2,000 she needs to contribute 2,192,18 cent over the period of 29 years which is 26 years to 55 years and if she contributes 2,192 by the age of 55, she's going to earn 2 million We will allow her then from there for the provident fund to invest in a bearing account from the age of 55 to 65 to allow her to achieve a target of 7,333,333,33 cent. And this will therefore be invested in a money market account and allow her to withdraw 55,000. So at the end of this question, it says how much must Lali contribute to be able to have sufficient monthly payment after retirement. So what we're going to do is that when we end this question, we're going to come and say Lali, Lali needs to contribute this amount, 2,192,18 cent for her to be able to withdraw 55,000 at the age of retirement and that is your end statement for this question so that will be the end statement for your question and then we can move towards question number three which says that what would the effect of them 
monthly cash flow after retirement b if the bank compounded the investment semi-annually for 10 years period in the interest bearing account using the answer in b so under this question it says that assuming that the bank which the provident fund is using changes and say that instead of us giving you interest compounded monthly under this statement number four where the provident fund guarantees that the interest bearing account will yield nine percent comp return compounded monthly instead of being it compounded monthly they're saying that if the bank changes and say investment will be semi-annually what will be the effect of cash flow after retirement so after on this question i'm just gonna write it down here so this is number c i'm just gonna do this so that we can be able to see which one i'm writing so we're calculating the effect so the effect is based on this information for number b to say that if she was to invest this 2,991,000 after using, after her being able to deposit 2,192. So they are saying that we know that she she has to contribute 2,192,18 cents for her to be able to achieve a return of, uh, so that she able to withdraw 55,000 at the end of her retirement days, uh, on, on her retirement dates. So therefore, if this is a contribution and this is how much she's gonna earn at the age of 55 so from the age of 55 to 65 the bank is saying we're no longer gonna give you uh, the frequency of compounding of 12 but we're gonna give you a frequency of compounding of semi annually so meaning that her payment a payment over the year will no longer be 12 but will now for be 2 because pre semi annually means that interest are going to be calculated or received twice over the year therefore we're gonna have to also change our n so our n will still be 10 will still be equal to 10 which is the 10 years period multiplied by the frequency of compounding <clears throat> so this will actually give us uh, what we call uh, so this will actually give us our n becoming 20 meaning that there is going to be 20 payments being made to her account and then we can calculate the interest over the year interest over the year will remain the same during this interest bearing account which is nine years so this is for 55 years to 65 years when interest have changed to semi-annually uh, component to semi-annually which is two times a year and then the present value so the present value is the amount that she's contributing towards this interest bearing account which is that amount up there so i'm just gonna do my undo so which is equals to this amount so she's still gonna be contributing two million nine hundred and ninety one but this time the only difference will be her future value <clears throat> so it will be her future value then we can calculate the future value to say that what will be the effect on a future value at the age of 65 what she's gonna receive so therefore we can actually go and use our financial calculator this time and say let's take a look at our financial calculator and say that let's clear it um, so we're gonna clear our time of money calculation from there we're gonna go and say two is now our frequency of compounding we clear that and then it will confirm that two payments have been set over the year so therefore if it's a period of 10 years therefore the number of payments period will actually be 20 and then interest over the year it's nine so i i will be nine and therefore present value will be the amount she's going to be investing which is two million nine hundred ninety one five hundred and forty comma twenty four during the age of 55 to 65 which is going to be an outflow so therefore that's our present value no withdrawal or deposit will be made during this investment so zero pmt and therefore we look for the future value so when we look for the future value the amount that she's going to receive at the age of 65 if the bank decide to charge her or to give her a compounded interest over semi-annually instead of monthly basis she's going to receive seven million two hundred and fourteen 
seven million two hundred and fourteen thousand seven hundred and thirty nine comma fifty five cent so this is the amount that she is going to receive at the age of 65 so when she received this amount it's gonna go towards her perpetuity account so I'll just write PPT for perpetuity. So it's going to go to a perpetuity account, which is for 65 years and onwards. So meaning that this is amount she's going to deposit, which is going to be the present value of that investment account, which is going to be equals to this amount. So this is going to be an outflow at the age of 65 when she invests this into a money market account. And therefore, internal change on this, there will still be 0 0.0075 on a monthly basis and on an annual basis therefore it will be different so let me just say equals to this and then here i will just have to make sure that it shows and then it's not it's a percentage so i'll just leave it like that so this is how much you'll be earning so therefore the effect of this on a monthly cash flow after retirement will be as follows. So we'll need the PMT, which is going to be equals to this amount multiplied by the interest that she'll be earning on a monthly basis. So therefore, she's going to be earning actually 54,110,55 cents. So our comment on this one will say that the effect of the bank changing the investment to semi-annually would affect the retirement after cash flow uh, of uh, Lali to her to be able to earn 54,110,55, which is below what is required. Therefore, this will have the negative impact on her retirement investment funds or retirement investment accounts. So therefore, the bank should stick to her to their monthly uh, to their frequency of compounding monthly interest instead of them converting them into semi-annually because she won't be able to achieve the 54 the 55,000 but now she'll achieve 54 which is below what she needs so that's how you're going to answer number c and then number d says during the initial period when lali will be contributing 2000 per month what is the effect rate that will the provident fund deliver so when she will be contributing 2000 the interest will actually be 8% compounded monthly. So the effective interest will be calculated as follows. So if it's on a monthly basis frequency, you clear your calculator, time value of money calculation, set the frequency of compounding first, then capture your interest rate, which is the nominal interest rate that have been quoted, which is 8 over the period of this uh, contribution of 2000 so you're gonna say 8 is my interest over the year so to calculate the effective interest rate you're gonna press second function and press present value which can activate the number key EFF percent representing effective interest rate so therefore once you press this she's going to earn 8.3 percent effective interest rate meaning that the total interest and over this investment is 8.3 instead of 8 percent because she's earning interest on top of interest meaning that once you earn interest of top of interest the gap of that interest on top of interest or the percentage will be represented by 0.3 the difference between 8 percent and the effective of 8.3 therefore it's 0.3 percent representing the interest on on top of interest which is 0.3 so in total the effective interest rate is 8.3 the last question says if the interest bearing account yield yielded an effective interest rate of nine percent what would the nominal rate compounded quarterly be so if the effective interest is nine percent what will be the nominal rate but compounded quarterly so one of the most important thing that you need to understand is that the effective interest rate it is the interest rate that the person have earned over their investment account it doesn't matter how the in the the frequency of compounding is set for that investment but the investment this will equal to the total uh, interest and over the whole year 
so i'm gonna give an example or if you want to see this please check out the other recordings that i made in terms of uh, changes in frequency of compounding and using the effective interest rate so under this one we are saying that the first thing we're gonna first clear this up let's clear our calculator once it's cleared we're gonna set this based on the new frequency of compounding which is quarterly to say that okay the frequency of compounding now is being set at a quarterly which is four quarters so it says if the interest bearing account yielded effective interest of nine interest of nine so we're gonna say nine second function and press this button which is the for effective interest rate as well because we use the second function it's going to activate the effective interest rate instead of present value therefore the effective interest rate will have been captured as nine percent so to find the nominal interest rate is written here under the interest over the year as norm percent so therefore we can go and say second function this uh in normal interest rate is going to tell us that the normal interest rate for this investment is actually 8.7 so meaning 8.7 per 71 percent so meaning that the nominal that was quoted for her to be able to achieve nine percent will actually be 8.7 percent 71 percent quote quoted annually over compounded and compounded quarterly so this is 8.7 quoted annually and then compounded quarterly and this will give her an effective interest rate of nine percent so you can still convert this 8.71 compounded quarterly to back to monthly to say that if this was what she was quoted on quarterly basis but the uh, the bank says that the interest therefore will also be compounded quarterly because of withdrawals that are going to be made on a monthly basis and interest will be calculated on those balances so therefore you're gonna go and say 8.71 it's my eye this time it's gonna be your normal interest rate and then since it's compounded quarterly therefore you're gonna go and say second function present value so it's gonna say 8.9999 Eight, six, and you round off this to the nearest two decimal is going to convert back to nine percent so meaning that the effective interest rate for that 8.7 one will actually be nine percent and therefore we can now go and say that let's clear this up we can now go and say nine percent is the effective interest rate and therefore we are trying to convert this back now to what to the frequency of compounding of 12 so therefore second function norm so it means that it is equivalent to 8.65 percent so meaning that for someone who's currently earning 8.71 compounded quarterly it's equivalent to someone who's actually earning 8.65 compounded on a monthly basis this is the end of our lesson in terms in terms of time value of money i hope you enjoyed the lesson and if you need more assistance, just type in under the comment section and then I'll be able to come to you and assist you. Thank you very much for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your day.